This is Glenn Berry and I'm back with another video. In this video I'm going to show you how to flash the BIOS on an MSI MAG B550M bazooka motherboard with no CPU installed. You might be wondering why would you ever want to do this? Well the most common reason is because you have a new Ryzen 5000 series CPU that won't work with the existing BIOS on your motherboard. You need to install a newer BIOS version in order to get your system to post and work with your new processor. I'm going to show you how to do this step by step. Please watch the entire video before you try to do this. And please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you like this video. So let's get started. This is page 45 of the motherboard manual. It has the six steps that you need to follow to flash your BIOS using this method. Now this skips a few things you need to worry about, so I'm going to walk you through every single step and show you how to do it. But just to recap these six steps, you've got to download the latest BIOS file that matches your motherboard. That's very important. And then you have to rename the BIOS file to msi.rom and save it to the root of your USB flash drive. And your USB flash drive has to be formatted in FAT32. Then you have to connect the power supply to your 24 pin and your 8 pin power supply connector. And then you put the USB flash drive into the proper port on the back of your motherboard. And then finally you press the flash BIOS button and you're going to see an LED start flashing. And it's going to take four to five minutes to complete this. So that's the high level steps, but don't worry, I'm going to show you every single step. The first step is to find your motherboard on the MSI website. So this is the MSI MAG B550M Bazooka motherboard. And when you find the proper page for that, you're probably going to be on the overview page. And that's not where you want to be. You need to go to the support page for that motherboard. So once I click on that, it takes me to the support page. And then you want to go to the BIOS page, which is right here. And then you want to find the latest version of the BIOS for your motherboard. So as of the time I recorded this, the latest version is right here. And there's the release date, November 4th, 2020. So that's what I want to download. So I click the download button and it's going to come down pretty quickly. It's only about 32 megabytes in size. So that's how you download the file. Next, we have to get that BIOS file that we just downloaded ready to go. So it's going to be in a zip file and you're going to have to unzip it. But before we do that, you should confirm that you've got file name extensions enabled in Windows. Because by default, when you install Windows 10, it has this checkbox turned off and you can't see the three letter file name extension for your files. So you need to make sure that that's turned on. So once you've confirmed that, the next thing you should do is go to your USB thumb drive that you're planning on using and right click on it and check the properties of it and make 100% sure that it's formatted in FAT32, not NTFS. A lot of larger USB thumb drives come formatted from the factory in NTFS. And if that's the case, you're going to have to go in and reformat it. So if that is the case for you, you can just right click on the drive and then you can pick format. And this will let you change the formatting, that, the file system that it's using. So you want to use FAT32, but mine's already set up to FAT32. But make sure you check that because if it's NTFS, none of this is going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this and get out of that. So now we have that zip file and I'm going to just right click and extract all and that's going to extract the files from the zip file and create another directory. So if I go in there, here's the actual BIOS file as it was in the zip file and we need to change the name of that to msi.rom. So if we go to rename and just type in msi.rom and then get rid of the old file name extension. That's how it should look. And once we accept this, Windows is going to complain about changing the file name extension. And that's fine. Go ahead and do it. So it has to be exactly like this. And then we copy that down to the root of the USB thumb drive. And it's very important that it's at the root. It's okay if there's other things on the drive. 
but you can't put this msi.rom file in some directory or folder that you have created on the USB drive. It has to be at the root. And these are all very specific picky things that the firmware that you're gonna use to update this with requires. So that's just the way it is, unfortunately. Here's a top view of the motherboard with the two power supply cables plugged in. You can see there's no CPU, memory, or video card installed. Here's the rear I.O. shield. This is a layout of the rear I.O. panel. You can see the flash BIOS button right there on the left. And then over kind of in the middle, right there on the bottom, that is the correct USB port to plug in the USB drive to. So the I.O. shield lets you confirm that, the one with the white outline around it right there. That's the correct one. You have to plug the USB drive into that port. So now we'll go ahead and put the USB drive into the correct port. And that's the one we want to use. The next step is to turn on the power supply. We have to do that or else the rest of this is not going to work. Now we're finally ready to press that flash BIOS button. And once you do that, you're going to see a flashing light down there next to the USB drive on the motherboard itself. And depending on your USB drive, you might see the USB drive itself flashing. And this is going to go on for four to five minutes. This is what the lights are going to look like while the BIOS is being updated. The top one is going to flash the entire time. The bottom right is the CPU debug light, and that's going to stay on even after it's finished. Here's what it should look like when it's finished. The debug CPU light on the bottom right is still going to be turned on, but the light that was flashing up by the USB drive on the motherboard will be turned off. Make sure you do not turn off your system if that's still flashing. So this is what it should look like again when it's done. So now we've seen how to flash the BIOS on this motherboard with no CPU installed. By the way, you can still use this same procedure if all the components have been installed on the motherboard. This is Glenn Berry and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you like this video because it really helps the channel out. Thanks for watching.